Children catch emotional intelligence. It is not taught. It is caught. Got you. And because I was raised in a time where we didn't talk about emotions, we didn't talk about emotional intelligence, we did not know how to build emotional resilience. Right. We just were taught to tough it out. That's which right. means that we were tra- traumatized and we didn't know how to deal with trauma. No, no, that's right. And, and- Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is The Odd Man. Greetings and salutations. Oddly, Stevens in here back for another edition of the Audacious Living Podcast. Hands down, the most audacious podcast you'll find on the internet. And I appreciate you for being here as always as we continue our ongoing goal of helping our listeners live their best audacious lives ever as always i encourage you to connect with us through our social media channels you can find us on twitter instagram and facebook under the handle the audacious pod and if you head over to youtube and tap that bell down below ding 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 you'll be connected to all great things audacious related now jackie simmons is the guest on today's edition of the podcast and in addition to being a speaker and author jackie is also the co-founder of the teen suicide prevention society which she started along with her daughter to help combat the rise in teen suicide then they definitely are on the rise in both canada and the u.s you know for example and you'll hear jackie touch on the fact that one in four teens struggle with suicidal thoughts uh which of course uh when you struggle with these thoughts that prevents you from believing that you can live your best audacious life ever and and it doesn't matter what's happening around to you around you once our young people reach this point it is very very serious um jackie and the teen suicide prevention society believes that having conversations early and paying attention to the signs are key in combating it. So prevent, you know, prevention starts long before the individual has been identified as an at risk uh, of, of doing harm to themselves. It starts, the process starts early, uh, watching for the signs and Jackie uh, uh, and her the, the, the work through her organization uh, spends a lot of time uh, uh, putting resources and investing into uh, the necessary components to help combat teen suicide. So uh, it really is an insightful conversation. Jackie offers up a lot of uh, points and, you know, viewpoints that maybe you may be aware of and maybe some new ones, but nonetheless, I definitely feel it is an insightful and worthwhile conversation to check out. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Jackie Simmons. Enjoy. Jackie, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me here on the Audacious Living Podcast. It's uh, such a pleasure to, to, to be with you today. Well, thank you. I am delighted to be here. Yes, yeah, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know we, we had to do some juggling to, to make it work, but uh, we're here now and that's all that matters. Um, and uh, I certainly want to jump into uh, to it with you today. I know you've been a, a huge advocate uh, for su- suicide prevention amongst our teens. Uh, the, the Teen Suicide Prevention Society is an organization that you started, which is near and dear to your heart. And I, I wonder, first off, if you can pr- get, provide an illustration and give, give, give listeners the opportunity audience, the numbers in terms of how big of a problem is this that we're talking about? Do you know four teenagers? I absolutely do. One of them is struggling to stay alive. Hmm. That's according to the Center for Disease Control. According to the CDC, over 25% of American young adults are struggling with suicidal thoughts. That's more than double what it was three years ago. Right. So it's progressively increasing and getting worse over time. Any idea what the, what the contributing factors might be to why the increase? Um, let's see. The first one, chronic negativity. Hmm. 
Chronic negativity, it's a thing. If you watch the news, yep. the majority of the news is not positive. In fact, it's negative. Right. And if you watch the news or you watch what's streaming on your social media, after a while, your brain starts to believe that that's exactly what the ratio of negative to positive is. Right. Doesn't matter that it's not true. What you believe trumps fact every time. Right. Right. And so when your brain gets that idea, the ability to be optimistic, to think that things are going to change, especially if you're under the age of 24, becomes a problem. Right. 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 When you're under the age of 24, you do not have an entire brain yet. Your prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. Right. Right. So you don't have the perspective of time. And so little hurt or even life experience or even life experiences for that matter. Right. Because right. I think you, you, as you go through experiences, you, you learn how to adjust, adapt and develop. And when you don't have that, you're seeing these things for the first time. You are. And it's a great question. I have people ask me all the time. Well, isn't it social media? Because there's so much out there that says, oh, it's they're spending so much time on their screens. Right. Um, actually, no, that's not the problem. The problem is that they are being judged for spending so much time on their screens. So now they are feeling guilty for doing something they enjoy. Now, by the way, our parents did it to us about the things that we enjoy. Okay. It is a it's culturally, a it's yeah, a I mean, this is just what we do with our kids. If you look at the headlines around rock and roll and how it's going to be um, the, the destruction of the brain of our teenagers, the same headlines are in the newspapers today. Oh, and by the way, the same headlines were in the newspapers in the 40s about jazz. <laughs> so it's change. It's different. Yes. We don't know how to adapt to it, but I can tell you how not to help your team. Use it as a punishment tool. Mm. During the COVID shutdown, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, these were their social connections yeah. and parents were using them as this whole, um, you know, do your chores or you don't get time on social media. And they were doing more harm than good, but it's not the parents' fault. It's what they were trained to do by their parents. Right, right, right. I have a very checkered past, okay? I'm just going to say, okay. yes, I was a family daycare provider. Okay. And I worked with children. And in that role, I was given massive amount of training, especially around the idea of reward and punishment versus okay. logical and natural consequences. Okay. My daddy was a drill sergeant. My mama was a school teacher. Okay. My grandfather was a preacher. Reward and punishment. I had people telling me what to say, what to think, what yep. to do, and what to believe. I can okay. see it. Yeah, I can see it. And yet logical and natural consequences are so much more effective. The logical consequences of things, the natural consequences. When I started the Suicide Prevention Show, which mm -hmm. is on YouTube and it's a podcast, it's yep. the Suicide Prevention Movement. The first person I interviewed was Anil Gupta. This is the happiness guy. He always wears a black shirt with a big red heart on it. And his attitude towards how do you deal with your kids? It's like, do you want to be in conflict with them over whether or not they did the dishes? Or do you want to sit down and have a conversation with them about whatever they want to talk about? Right. We have to outgrow the reward and punishment model if we want to have a relationship with our children going forward. Well, you know, Jackie, what that really says to me is that you've got to really think about the, the big picture here, right? Like, what is the most important thing when you look at the entire landscape? It's the relationship with your children on a long-term, ongoing basis, or as you said, the example, you know, the dishes that we need to get done right now. Like, and not to say that's not important, you know, chores, mm -hmm. responsibility, not at all. But yeah. you, you, you've got to understand you know, what's absorb most important. They absorb that through their skin. How you relate to the things that you feel obligated to do is how your kids are going to react. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, watch T.D. Jakes. Mm. Bishop T.D. Jakes on commitment. Yeah. 
that's one sermon where he talks about a half committed trifling woman and a half committed trifling man. And then they wonder why their kids are not committed to anything. Right. Right. Children catch emotional intelligence. It is not taught. It is caught. Got you. And because I was raised in a time where we didn't talk about emotions, we didn't talk about emotional intelligence. We did not know how to build emotional resilience. Right. We just were taught to tough it out. That's which right. means that we were tra- traumatized and we didn't know how to deal with trauma. No, no, that's right. And, and, and nor did anyone know you were going through any kind of trauma either. I've spent the last 40 years as a stress management consultant studying everything I could get my hands on because I couldn't find a solution for myself in Western medicine. Counseling therapy, medications, and interventions could get me stable from right. cl- clinical depression, right. but they didn't cure me. And after my second bout, I wanted a cure. Sure, of course. Um, you know, I was not willing to go back there. And by the way, I did not know that was a suicidal thought. Hmm. But that's a suicidal thought. Interesting. Interesting. I will not live like this again. The most famous one of all time is Scarlett O'Hara, as God is my witness. By the way, guys, as strong as that statement sounds, it actually tells the brain that if you find yourself then there again, suicide is an option. Right. Because mm. you said you're not going to do this again. Right, right, right. Suicidal thinking is, by the way, normal. There's nothing wrong with the suicidal thought. Sigmund Freud said it's our brain's natural negative bias, our worst case scenario problem solving mechanism. Right. It's only a problem if you wrap some emotion around it, if you're afraid of it. And in this day and age, we're afraid. We're afraid to speak up. Well, you know, going back to so you, the the first point that you made is you know the things that we feed ourselves, right? And mm-hmm. and 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 I think that 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 really is a significant point where you talk about the negativity in our society, generally that's out there, and 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 and, and how we kind of take that in and own that a lot mm-hmm. of times, right? So I mean that just really goes back to you know I heard my mom say when I was a child, you know, be careful of the music you listen to or the things you do, right? Because you've got to feed your mind, right? And that's what that's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, what well, you do. What we've forgotten is that, and this they knew in the 40s, especially, and even earlier. When you are allowing other people's thoughts and words to come into your ears and into your eyes, you are giving permission for people to brainwash you. Give permission with some thought around it, guys. But our teens can't do that. Right. You know, they they just are not equipped to make those decisions. And you know what's really scary? If you look at it from the perspective I have now, I've got grandkids that are, you know, adults. So my perspective now is I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now we know the prefrontal cortex is not built until we're 12, not developed till we're 24. And we are asking kids between the ages of 12 and 24 to decide what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. What about this makes sense? Uh, you know what? I, I, I often wondered about that on many occasions and um, it does, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't at all. Uh, you know, we, we know, I'm sure, you know, we know grown adults that don't know what they want to do with the rest of their lives. Right. And so that, to put these on children, it doesn't make, you're right. It doesn't make sense at all. No, I mean, this is how we got the books, like the Peter Pan principle and stuff. I won't grow up. Yeah. I mean, we make growing up sound so wonderful right up until reality hits and meaning grown up means you have to pay your own bills. You know, you also have to deal with the dentist. So you start to floss your own teeth. You know, it's amazing what comes with being a grown up. Oh, you know what revenge is? What's that? My oldest daughter, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Is starting a podcast. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Adulting sucks. Uh, uh, and it doesn't have to. Uh, I love it. That's Her awesome. son just turned 18. Okay. So he's okay. the first interview that's going to go up on that podcast. Oh, I am amazing. so excited. No, that's amazing. I, it's, it's for you to watch it kind of go full circle, right? 
It is. To see your daughter and your son. That's amazing. Um, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about sort of the, the four steps in a conversation. So actually, we'll go back. One of the things I, I hear you oftentimes talk about is encourage the conversation. I wonder if you sort of spend some time talking about the significance of having that dialogue uh, with our teens specifically. Here's what usually happens. Well, actually, I will quote my middle daughter, Stephanie. Okay. She said, mom and I had the talk, you know, the talk about sex. Mom and I had the talk about drugs. Mom and I had the talk about alcohol. Then I went to college on a dry campus. That means the kegs were hidden in the showers of the girl's dorm. When you think you're going to have the talk about suicide, the first thing that's going to happen is your kids are going to roll their eyes and their brains are going to turn off. Right. And, and of course they will, because you, most parents will come at this talk with more fear than they come at the talk about sex, drugs, or alcohol. Oh my God. You, you want to, yeah, I got to tell you this story. Okay. Cause I've, it's been two years since we launched almost two years since we launched the teen suicide prevention society. Oh, wow. Only two years that young. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Only two years. Yeah. We, we, we got our 501 C three on April the 1st, oh, wow. 2020. Yeah. This is the cosmic joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. We were all set to go into schools across the country and all the schools closed. Wow. So it was April Fool's Day. Of course yeah, they yeah, closed. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The idea of having these talks scares the crap out of parents, but I didn't really understand it because I'm from the day. Do you remember public service announcements? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the egg. Yes. You know, this is your brain. Crack yes. sizzle. Yes. This is your brain on drugs. on drugs. That's right. My favorite one was the parents talking to it like a like a 12, 13 year old. And they're going, honey, nobody's saying sex is bad. But at 13, it will kill your dreams. Mm. Now, these public service announcements worked because we were all grouped around one screen. Right. The entire family saw the message at the same time and it right. could spark a conversation. Correct. Not what's happening today. Mm hmm. So I thought, great, I will get a public service announcement campaign out through social media. It's going sure. to show up on everybody's phones. Sure. Here was my thought. And here, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's still out there. At least I think it was beautiful. The first thing is, mom, dad, are your kids at risk? Do you wait to talk to your kids about sex until after they're pregnant? Did you wait to talk to your kids about drugs until after they were in rehab? Did you wait to talk to your kids about alcohol until after they've lost their license for drunk driving? Mm -hmm. Are you waiting to talk to your kids about suicide? I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. The response? Mm -hmm. Crickets. Really? Because what I found out is that parents are not having the talks about sex, drugs, and alcohol anymore, and I expect them to talk about suicide. What was I thinking? Well, well, it's so out there. You don't need to have that talk anymore. It's so much ingrained in part of our society on, you know, primetime television now. You know, I wish it was true that you don't have to have that talk anymore. Mm. What they missed with all of these talks is why people are drawn towards being early sexual, being early drugs, being early drinking. Why are people drawn towards suicidal thoughts? They totally missed it. And it wasn't until I was getting ready for my TEDx talk that I finally got what was happening. Can you be a little bit pregnant? <laughs> no. Here's the problem. Pregnancy prevention is about preventing someone from becoming pregnant. Yes. Suicide prevention is about preventing someone from taking their life. The problem is the issue with suicide is that it's not the final act that's the issue. And at the Teen Suicide Prevention Society, once we realized what the issue was, we realized the problem is not preventing suicide. There's all of these programs out here. Yes. It's about preventing suicidal thinking. 
mm-hmm. from getting stuck inside someone's head and becoming what we call the negative echo chamber. Mm. So we created ways to crack open a negative echo chamber. That's called the why not workbook. Okay. And we created the talk that saves lives to prevent it from becoming an echo chamber in the first place. Mm. And so that's the four questions. The four step guide to stop suicide is what we call the talk that saves lives. And we can teach it to anyone in less than five minutes. Right. Okay. What's that look like? Can we do that real quickly? Oh, absolutely. You, yeah. you ready? You want to role play this? And then they'll actually get an idea. Sure. Of what it's like. Let's go. Let's go with it. All right. Okay. So parents, hey, take a deep breath. Here's how it starts. Okay. Okay. You, you say to your kid, I've become part of the mission to make teen suicide a thing of the past. Honey, they gave me a guide and I need to practice. Would you be willing to spend a few minutes with me tomorrow to help me practice? the guide? Sure, sure. Yeah. At that moment, parents, you have just turned on the dopamine center in your kid's brain because they have an indoor, they have an inner three-year-old okay. who's going, I get to help, I get to help. <laughs> you know, I mean, teenagers don't jump up and down, but remember no. when your three-year-old did. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So cool. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's only four questions. Okay. Question one. Have you heard about the rise in teen suicides? Uh, No, I I haven't. Thank you. Question two. Do you have a friend who's tried or died? Do you have a story? I, I, I don't know of one. No, none of my friends. No, no, I haven't. No. Thank you. Audrey. Audrey. Sorry. Yeah. Have you ever thought of leaving that way? No, I'm not at all. I'm quite happy. No, not at all. Question four. Why stay? What are your reasons for staying? I have a good life. I'm happy. Uh, You know, I've got family that loves me and I love them and people depend on me. And so absolutely, I wouldn't want to leave them. Another way to ask this? What's so good about your life that you want more of it? Mm, That's a great question. So for parents, I want to just give you um, a sense of absolute safety and security around this talk. It's got a built-in early warning system. You want to know where it is? Where, where? If your child says yes to question three, yes, they've had thoughts of leaving. And when you ask them, why stay? What are your reasons for staying? Yeah. And they have nothing. So they have thoughts of leaving. Yes. They have no reasons for staying. We say stay with them and dial 911. Mm. <clears throat> they will hate you for it. Sure. And they might hate you for a really long time because there's still going to be a lot. Sure. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, oh, but I got a question for you, oddly. Yeah. You know, we've been at this for a couple of years now. Okay. Yeah. We've had thousands of talks, right? Yeah. Yes. How many do you think, what percentage do you think of the people have had thoughts of leaving and zero reasons for staying? The, the percentage, uh, gee, well, considering how high the numbers are, uh, I would say it was, it's, well, maybe 30%? Zero. Wow. Zero. Here's why. Wow. It transforms that. Someone who is struggling with suicidal thinking, someone who is struggling with depression, uh-huh. they are really, really, really good at one thing, masking it. Mm. So you get to question four. You ask them why stay? What are your reasons for staying? They are going to lie. Right. Gotcha. And guess what just happened in their brain? They heard themselves have reasons for staying. Yeah. 
That's right. This builds out a buffer between them and an edge that you didn't even know they were Existed. near. Yes, yes, I see it. I mean, neurologically, what happens is, and this is a very neuroscience-based talk, by the way. Yep. Those first three questions drive my coaches crazy because they are closed-ended questions. And anybody who's ever been trained as any kind of coach is like, you never ask a closed-ended question. Right, right. Anybody right. who's been trained in sales, you never ask a closed-ended right. question. Right. Yeah. And I've been trained in both. And the reality is that <laughs> we do this intentionally. Yeah. We start from the bigger picture. We bring it down close. We bring it home. Yes. And then we take all of that energy in their neuro networks that was connected to suicide and pull it and redirect it into reasons for stay. Mm. Because your brain now, your brain and everybody who was listening, yeah. their brains now have a file folder that's labeled reasons for staying yeah, yeah. that has all of that energy in it. Yeah, and it's so important. I, again, I'm sorry to cut you, but that's such yeah. an important point to be able to articulate and identify and subconsciously put these in our in, in our brains. And even going back when you, when, you, when, when you think of the very first question, right? And in terms of, have, are you aware of? So mm -hmm. let's, let's just say, you know, that, that there was no awareness of it. Well, but that question created an awareness. Mm -hmm. It did. It, it made it safe. Yes, that's right. This, this talk is designed to make it safe to even be aware of the rise in suicides. Right. And then it makes it safe to say, yeah, I know somebody. And then it makes it safe to say, yeah, I've had those thoughts. Mm. And then... It takes all of that that we've now opened up and redirect it into why stay. What are your reasons for staying? And by the way, on the TeenSuicidePreventionSociety.com website, yep, yep. we have a button labeled reasons for staying. Okay. We want people to go to the website and give us your reasons for staying. We are going to publish a book, Reasons for Staying, 365 Ways to Stay. Amazing. Amazing. Good That's point. our goal. We want to get that done this year. Yeah. So we want everybody to go to the website and tell us your reasons for staying. What's so good about your life that you want more of it? That's right. And I, and, and I, and I love that statement. What is so good about your life? Because there all there's something there, for, for each and every single one of us there is something there we might it might be blocked we might be in an emotional state where we can't see it maybe mentally we're, we're our, our thoughts are subdued but there is something there so when you ask that question it makes you consciously say yeah i got this thing and it's mm -hmm. worth it yeah amazing we've collected reasons for staying ever since we started and we started teaching people how to become not just good at having the talk, because the goal of having the talk is super simple. Write the list. It's your 20. We call it the power of 20. Mm -hmm. What statistics have shown is that when one person takes their own life, it negatively impacts in a big way an average of 20 people. Yeah. So we decided to flip that. And now we've got 20 circles. We've got the power of 20. And we want everyone to write down the list of the 20 people you would miss the most if they were not here for whatever reason. Mm. And then you just download the script. It's on the website. You download the guide that stops suicide. Right. You can watch the videos of where I teach how to do it, how to do the invitation. Yeah. And, and you just start at the top of your list or the bottom of your list. Yeah, I, I alternate. I'm one of those. Yeah, I'll do number one, I'll do number 20, then I'll do two and 19, and then I'll do three and 18. I get you. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you do. Yeah. And by the time you have the talk that stops suicidal thinking with 20 people, your brain will have built out 20 folders of reasons yes. for staying yes. because of something called mirror neurons. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing is we are suicide proofing you. Yes, yes, yes. By 
by encouraging you to have the talk it. that saves lives with the people you care about. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it because you're really, you're, you're doing the prevention work long before, right? And, 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 and the work is happening that you don't even realize it. You're fortifying your mind. You're essentially, Jackie, what you're doing is you're building resilience. Exactly. Right? You're building a form of resilience, and 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 you're in your, but you're 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 indirectly doing it in a way that I'm doing it in a way issue. that's effortless. Yeah, yeah, it's effortless. Now, if somebody really wants to build emotional resilience, I yep. teach emotional resilience mastery level one, level two. Yep. Um, and then we get into conscious transformational coaching, how to and how to rewrite your story. I mean, this is my business. What happened with the Teen Suicide Prevention Society when my daughter, Stephanie, um, August the 3rd, 2019, my daughter, Stephanie, now 37, well, she was 37 then, she gave a little talk. It was a message that matters. And on the day of her talk was sunny and already hot because mm -hmm. it was on the outskirts of Sarasota, Florida. Mm -hmm. I walked into the conference room and greeted the 12 speakers that I had trained to deliver okay. messages that matter. Okay. Now you'll like this. Everything worked. The slides, the PowerPoint, yeah. the videographer, the microphone. Yeah. 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 The audience was taking their seats and Stephanie, oh my God, she was in that nervous, excited state you get into before you give a talk. She looked amazing. Yo, dark blouse, flowery yeah. skirt. Her hair was pulled back in combs. So I, mean, I am super proud of my daughter. Of course, yeah. She was first up on the speaker's roster. So I welcomed her. I was like, hey, everybody, help me welcome Stephanie Ashton. She walked up, confidently shook my hand, and started with that statistic. Mm. Three thousand American teenagers will attempt to take their own lives today. In the back of the room, I was stunned twice. First, because I had no idea the right. number was that high. Right, right, right. I mean, who knew? Yeah, yeah. And the second was because I didn't know suicide was her topic. Mm. The next word she said, when I was 14, after a bad day of shopping, I stood in my bathroom. The pain of not fitting into any clothes was just more proof that I didn't fit in anywhere. Mm. And that pain was more than I could bear. So I took a razor and cut into my left arm, trying to stop the pain and end my life. Hmm. In the back of the room, I felt the blood drain yeah, out of my yeah. face. I Have you ever been hijacked by a bad yeah. memory? Right, right. 30 years of stress management training is the only reason I didn't crawl into a corner wow. and just start bawling. Cause wow. I had lived through that with her, mm. but we hadn't really talked about it in 23 yeah. years. And then she said, it wasn't my only attempt. There were others, but outside of professional help, I've never really talked about it, especially not with mom. Mm -hmm. And then she shared all those other talks that we had had. Yep. Yep. And then she said, I still struggle with suicidal thoughts. Wow. wow. In the back of the room, I went from pale to bone cold. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. In that moment, I realized the struggles that my daughter had faced alone because I didn't have the courage to have the talk about suicide. Mm. I had been afraid that I would put the thought back in her head which is a myth and the truth. I was afraid. I was afraid to find out what could cause her so much mental and emotional pain that my child would think dying was better than living. Right. She wound up her talk by saying that on her suicide avoidant journey, she had learned tons of coping skills. Now she wanted to teach those skills to teenagers before they need them. Yes, before they need them. <laughs> oh, my God. There was not a dry eye in the room, yeah, including I mine. I could just imagine. People stood up, gave her a standing ovation. People were rushing up and hugging her. They were thanking her for being so brave and so willing and so vulnerable. And in the back of the room, I was frozen. 
course. Totally torn between pride for her bravery and guilt and shame for my cowardice. Mm. And then it hit me. 3,000 teenagers attempt to take their own lives every day. Mm. This means every day over 6,000 parents start to live the guilt nightmare that I had lived. Right, right, sure. And this means every day over 20,000 grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, and sisters start to live the guilt nightmare. Mm. And this means every day over hundreds, actually hundreds of thousands of classmates, teachers, neighbors, boyfriends, girlfriends, all start to live the guilt nightmare that I had lived. And Adley, I think most of them were just as blindsided by it as I had been. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Then I wondered if Stephanie was on to something. This idea of having the talk before you think they need it, teaching them the skills before you think they need them. Mm -hmm. And my brain went, Simple and obvious, so obvious that we that professionals are tripped over it. Yeah. I mean, you know what some you're a man of a certain age, you know what simple and obvious is, right? Like yeah. putting wheels on luggage. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah um, yeah. or putting ketchup in bottles you squeeze. Hey, hey, when I came out, I was excited. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, simple and obvious. Sure, sure. I get it. And so after that event. Stephanie and I decided to work together. That's when, with her sisters, we founded the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. Mm. What we've learned by teaching moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you know, what we've learned by teaching them is that something so simple makes a massive difference. Right. If you are simply willing to have the talk before you think it's needed, so it's not about them. It's not, you know, are you thinking of killing yourself? Are you think, do you have a right. plan? It's not right. any of that intervention. Right. There's so many good programs on the intervention side. We don't yeah. need another one of those. No, no. My goal is to make those not needed. Not necessary, exactly. Yep. That's, That's right. my whole goal. My yep. goal is to put them out of business. I've talked to pharmaceutical companies who make the antidepressant drugs and yes. the, all these things for teens, yep. and they want me to put them out of business. Sure. I mean, this is not big, bad pharma. These are people who want us to cure the problem. Right, exactly. Because it, it impacts all of us. We're all affected by it. And and you, you, know, you gave the numbers of the parents and the extended family and, oh, and everyone and, else. And, it's and all... I, I'm, I'm just going to say I apologize to everybody because those numbers of 3,000, 6,000, 20,000, and hundreds of thousands are from before COVID. Mm. That's a real good point. Those numbers are from 2019 mm. before COVID. Yep. Before it became over 25% of our young adults were struggling with suicidal thoughts. Oh, by the way, that number of 25% is from the CDC in August of 2020. Mm. I cannot walk into a networking room. I can't walk into a virtual networking room. There is one in every room. Here's what happens. As soon as I say I'm the director of the Teen Suicide Prevention Society, my private chat starts blowing up. There is at least one person in that room grieving the loss of someone they love to suicide. Yeah. And there is at least one person in that room struggling to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, that just goes back to your point, how much affected we all are it, and, yeah. and how wide reaching it is. We are all at risk. By the way, I call that the suicide wars, war with two A's. We're all at risk. Mm. And that's why we keep building out new things. I mean, the Why Not Workbook is out there. Yep. Um, which is a great interventive tool. Yep. The talk that saves lives. My TEDx talk is out there. The yeah. Make It a Great Day, The Choice is Yours book mm. is out there. It's got an elephant on the front Yeah. because I like elephants. Also, elephant is the universally accepted metaphor for the subconscious mind. Ah. Great little book out called The Ant and the Elephant. Okay. Compared to an elephant, subconscious mind. Yeah. 
your conscious mind is an ant. So that doesn't make for a great visual. So I say, okay, this is you. This is your subconscious mind. Yes. (laughs) Yes, that's better. Yeah, because I teach this every day, all the time, always. Yep. When you understand how your brain really works, all of a sudden you reclaim the power Absolutely. of choice. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you go back to that and you 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 subliminally put our messages by just asking simple questions or, or are directing people to think in a mm-hmm. certain manner. And oh, I'm, says, I'm 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 a ninja. I am a neuro <laughs> neuro guru ninja. Um, because I think it's simple. I think it's easy. And I think we tend as humans to overcomplicate things and to discount what's simple. Mm. And yet, if you're struggling with stress today, if you take a deep, slow breath and hold it, breathe in for four, hold it for four, release for four, let your lungs stay empty for four, breathe in. You do that. It's called box breathing. You do that four times. You're just a perfect 16, four square. Yep. Your body will reset into its safe. And the sensors at the diaphragmic level of your lungs will tell your body to produce the chemicals that counterbalance the stress cocktail. It's physiology, not Mm. fantasy, guys. Mm. This is how the body was designed. This is how our common ancestor, Og, survived. And once you understand how the system works, you can understand how to work the system. System, Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Jackie, it's amazing. I think it's awesome. The fact that, uh, first of all, the, the manner in which you, bre- you break things down, uh, very simplistic manner, but they're impactful or powerful. Again, I'm going to go back to the, 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 the subconscious subliminal messages that are being planted, forcing you to think about you know, your reasons for living even if you're not considering it, but you're, you're, you're getting, as, and I think you use the example of you creating that mental file folder where you're putting that in and that way you're able to have that there with you that you can draw back on. Those are, those are, are, are great tools. They're wonderful. Uh, and uh, I think your, 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 your mission of eradicating teen suicide, I think it's a, you know, to make it a thing of the past. I think it's a wonderful one and, and it's certainly a doable goal. If people took into account some of these strategies that you have. You know what the biggest challenge is? What's that? Getting people to stop long enough to realize that one simple act, one simple talk could make a difference. Yeah. So we created a membership platform. Okay. And it's $27 a month. Okay. Gives people massive value. Gives them a one, um, a group program with me once a month. Gives them the ability to have me come in and speak to their organization. You know, it, we put as much in there as we could. And here's why we did it. Someone reached out to us, a man named Shakur. Okay. In the Makuru slums of Nairobi, Kenya, their suicide rate among children makes ours look like nothing. Wow. So we partnered with them a year ago. Okay. And Kids over 750 every day get breakfast, a meal, sometimes the only meal they get. And here's what's changed. Where school attendance was around 23%, yep. the kids that come into this program, their school attendance is over 80%. Mm. When you have hope, when you have optimism, when you have that, You've got the ability to have emotional resilience because that's what hope and optimism do is they make you resilient. Yes, and they build it. Last month, we partnered with them to build a shelter. We've been, we had, we helped them with a library. Yep. So we partnered with them now to rent a shelter so that the people who don't have a place to sleep at night, who have mm-hmm. been wandering the slums, who have been the victims of violence and rape and sodomy now have a place where they can sleep at night. Yes, it's amazing. 
And it happened because people stepped up and said, yes, I want to help because $27 may not go very far in the United States, but it goes really far in the McCoover slums. Amazing. So we're like, you know, guys, we will help you for free here. Will you help us help them? Yep. And that's what we're doing. We want Amazing. people to understand that a little bit of effort on your part will change the lives of hundreds of people. It's all about collaboration and partnership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what we're doing. It's yeah. all, yeah, I mean, we don't even have splash pages. We don't have, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Most of what's been built out has been built out by myself and my kids. Guys, I am not a computer programmer. So don't <laughs> judge me by my website. But you show up on that website. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give the site there, Jackie, so we our listeners know what it is. What's your website? Teen Suicide Prevention Society.com. There, there we go. There we go. Thank you. There we go. Listen, Jackie, this is this has been so awesome. Uh, for, uh, first off, again, I, I, I love the approach. I love the messaging. Uh, and I love the fact that you're shedding light on a topic that, uh, again, that the conversation doesn't happen around. And uh, whether it's fear or whatever the reasons are, uh, you know, we're saying it's okay to have that conversation. And again, I think through your, 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 your strategies, uh, you show some really easy ways to do that. And, uh, so, so I think that's a, those are great tools uh, to, to our listeners. Again, the website is Teen Suicide Prevention prevention society.org and dot com. Uh, dot com sorry and you can go there and and get more information get part of the conversation l even learn i think that's that, that's a big thing they because, can download the guide to stop yeah, suicide right yeah, there yeah anything, all we ask is that you yeah, write yeah. your list to 20 that's it. Any, anything that creates awareness and opens up eyes, I think would be a great thing. And it is, is a good thing. So thank you for that, Jackie. And thank you for being here with me on the Audacious Living Podcast. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Back we are here on the podcast, and it was great to sit down and chat with Jackie uh, about the topic of suicide prevention and suicide thinking uh, amongst our teens. Uh, there are a ton of supports and services that can be tapped into if you think uh, there are services that are needed. If you have a young person that you have questions about, I would absolutely encourage you to connect with them and, and, and do so. You know, when I reflect on my conversation with Jackie, you know, she really left us with a lot of great things to think about. But if there's just one thing that I take from our chat, it would be this. Suicidal thoughts can be passive or active and leave into, potentially leave individuals feeling overwhelmed, helpless, and unsure of where to turn to for support. These thoughts can exist even if you don't have any depression or experiencing any other mental health diagnosis. You know, oftentimes suicidal thoughts simply mean that the person's experiencing more sadness than pain than they know how to manage. A key to suicide prevention is being open to having those conversations early and being there as a source of support. It's completely natural to, to want to put a stop to the pain and happiness, and it's in that moment suicidal thoughts might surface when you can't envision a way out of the distress. But you do have options for getting the support that you need and being getting past those situations. And I encourage you to tap into them because it's at that point when you feel that you can get through the other side that allows you to live the life to its fullest and, and allow us as individuals to be as audacious as we want. Hey, listen, if you haven't registered for email notifications of the podcast, I would certainly encourage you to do so by checking out bestaudaciouslives.com. All you've got to do is enter in your email address and you'll be alerted every time we've got brand new content that comes out. Uh, we've reached the end of another episode of the podcast and I would encourage um, you, or actually let me back by encouraging anything. I want to make a big shout out uh, to all our listeners because... 
Uh, you folks are the ones that keep this thing going. Uh, you lovers of audacious. Again, I want to thank you uh, big time. I encourage you, if you have support of the podcast, head over to your favorite uh, podcast listening platform. You know, give us a five star rating or whatever rating you deem is appropriate. It would be appreciated. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, and show love to one another and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.